On behalf of Belfast National Graves, can I send Easter greetings to our friends at home and abroad. For over a hundred years, Republicans have gathered in this graveyard to commemorate those men and women and young people who have fought and died in the cause of Irish freedom. We particularly this Easter want to pay tribute to the families of our patriot dead. We remember our heroes with pride, with fondness and with sorrow. Behind us and scattered in this graveyard are the graves of Republicans of every generation. And this Easter, because of restrictions, we won't be able to do our traditional parade into the graveyard, but I can assure those, and especially the families, that the Belfast National Graves will commemorate with pride and dignity in a fashion that is fitting to remember Ireland's Patriot dead. Hoblacht na Heron, the provisional government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood. Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army. Having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment. And supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies, to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, 
cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women. The provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms. And we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or repent. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children, to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McGermida, P. H. Pierce, James Connolly, Thomas McDonough, Eamon Kent, Joseph Plunkett. I have met them a close of day, coming with vivid faces, from counter or desk among grey, 18th century houses. I have passed with a nod of the head or plight meaningless words, or have lingered a while and said plight meaningless words, and thought before I had done of a mocking tale or a jibe. To please a companion around the fire at the club, being certain that they and I but lived remotely as worn. All changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. That woman's days were spent in ignorant goodwill. Her nights in argument until her voice grew shrill. What voice more sweet than hers when young and beautiful? She rode to harriers. This man had kept the school and rode our ringed horse. This other, his helper and friend, was coming into his force. He might have won fame in the end, so sensitive his nature seemed, so daring and sweet his thought. This other man I had dreamed, a drunken, vainglorious lout. He had done most bitter wrong to some who are near my heart. Yet I number him in the song. He too has resigned his part in the casual comedy. He too has been changed in his turn, transformed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. Hearts with one purpose alone, through summer and winter seem enchanted to a stone. The trouble, the living stream, the horses that comes from the road, the rider, the birds that range, from the cloud to the tumbling cloud, minute by minute they change. A shadow of cloud on the stream changes minute by minute. 
A horse hoof slides on the brim and a horse plashes up within it. The long legged moors hens dive and the hens of the moors cocks call. Minute by minute they live, the stones in the midst of it all. Too long a sacrifice can make a stone of the heart, or oh, when may it suffice. That is heaven's part, our part, to murmur name upon name as a mother names her child. When sleep at last has come on limbs that had run wild. What is it but nightfall? No, no, not night but death. Was it needless death after all? For England may keep faith for all that is done and said. We know their dream enough. To know they dreamed and are dead. And what if access of love bewildered them till they died? I read it out in a verse, Macdonough and McBride and Connolly and Pierce, now and in time to be. Wherever green is worn, are changed, changed utterly, a terrible beauty is born.